Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? How you doing? When you come into the room, um, if you would, just let us know you're here. Uh, tell us hello. Hi, guys. Um, it's Tuesday morning. It's an awesome spring morning here in the Mid-South. And I'd love to know that you're here. And the only way I know that you're here is if you hit some likes, hit some hearts, or you type a, a real quick hello into the room out there. We've been talking about heaven. We've been talking about hell. We've been talking about life after death. And today we're going to go to this place at li in life after death, at least in the subject. Uh, is there going to be a judgment? Will God judge people? And who will he judge? And what will he judge? Will God judge believers? Uh, will God judge unbelievers? Uh, will God judge, you know, uh, what we've done or what we believe? All of these questions are very important. And we sometimes get super mixed up on what God is going to do uh, in the end times. So I want you to share this out. If you can, real quick, just hit the share button or tag people in the post. Just however you get this out, whether you're watching this live or you're watching it pre-recorded. Okay, so I've got some scriptures. I want to jump right in. Get your pen, get your paper, and here we go. I'm going to read these scriptures, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, the heavens and the earth preserved by the word of God, are reserved for fire. For fire until the day of judgment and perdition, or eternal judgment, perdition means eternal judgment, of ungodly men. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. But I say to you that for every idle word, listen to this, for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And it is appointed for men to die once, but after that, the judgment. Here's my question for you. And I want you to hit likes or hearts or type in your answer, but here's the question. We're very interactive here. This is, this is not me preaching or teaching. This is us talking. Is there a judgment day coming? I've just read, what, four verses, four or five verses, and I'm asking you, right here at Pray First, is there a judgment day coming? Second question. The answer to that one is yes, absolutely. Here's the second question. Will everyone be judged? Will everyone be judged? Saved, lost, good, bad? Will everyone be judged? Yes, Will believers be judged? Yes. Will unbelievers be judged? Yes. Now here's the big question. Will we be judged? Now listen to it clearly. Will we be judged by grace or works? This is a huge question because this is going to lead us everywhere we're going over these next two days. Will we be judged by grace or works? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Will we be judged by grace or works? Yes. We will be judged by both. Now I want you to listen and, and hear me clearly, especially you church folks. Salvation is not based, salvation is not judged by works. Salvation is 100% based on grace. Salvation, we'll say this again, this is important. Salvation is not based on works. Salvation is based on grace. But at the judgment, whether you are saved or whether you are lost, whether you are a believer or an unbeliever, whether you think you're good or you think you're bad, at judgment, both are judged both by your salvation, your grace, and your behavior by your works. Let me read you a couple of more verses. 
<clears throat> Ecclesiastes. Let me make sure I have this here. Ecclesiastes. I want to get that one pulled up there for you. I don't want to miss that verse. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14 says this. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing. And all God's people say, Woo! <coughs> Ecclesiastes 12, 14. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. Everybody needs to hit some uh-ohs. Say uh-oh. Hit some uh-ohs out there, guys. That's some uh-ohs. God's going to judge every work, even the secret works, good or bad. There's secret goods and secret bads. Amen? Revelation chapter 20, verse 13. The sea gave up the dead and all who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one, each one, according to their works. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear, awe, or respect. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man will come in all the glory of his Father and his angels, and then he will reward each one according to their works. Revelation twenty two twelve. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. Come on, guys. If you're a believer, he's coming quickly. His reward is with him. You need to be tearing up some hearts and likes on that one. And my reward is with me to give to every one, every one, each, every, every one according to their work. Listen to me, guys. I'm in each. You're in each. Say, I'm in each. Woo! I'm in each. You're in each. I'm in every. You're in every. Say, I'm in every. I'm in every. I'm in every. You're in every. I'm in each. You're in each. God is coming to reward each and every one according to their works. One more time, I'm going to say this because I don't want anybody to misunderstand. We are not saved by works, but we are judged by works. This is, a, this is something we leave out, and it's why the grace people get so mad when people talk about works. And it's why the works people get so mad when people talk about it's all grace. Guys, it's not either or. It is both. It is both by grace and works. Not that you're saved, but that you're judged. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved. Woo! Woo, that's good. If you're a believer, you need to tear up something on that. For by grace you have been saved. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Saved by grace, judged according to works. We must learn to distinguish between two words, beliefs and behaviors. Say beliefs. Beliefs. Now say behaviors. Behaviors. We must learn to distinguish between beliefs and behaviors, and both matter. They both matter. People who think that they can just believe and not behave and just can have faith and not, and not works, faith without works is dead. It, it doesn't exist. Belief determines where we are going to spend eternity. Our faith determines where we're going to spend eternity. Our behavior depend, determines how we're going to spend eternity. Let's talk about two judgment seats. There's two judgment seats. There's no question there's going to be a judgment. There's no question that the believer and the unbeliever are going to be judged. There's no question that salvation comes by grace. There's no question that your works are going to be judged. There's no question that you will be rewarded for your good works. <coughs> Now, there are two judgments. Number one, there's the judgment seat of Christ, or Bema, B-E-M-A, the judgment seat of Christ. At the judgment seat of Christ, every person who is before the judgment seat of Christ is a believer. 
every one of them. God only brings believers to the judgment seat of Christ. And the second one is the great white throne judgment. At the great white throne judgment, every person that there is an unbeliever. Let me ask you a question. If their destinations have already been determined, if their destinations has already been determined according to their faith, if their destinations has already been determined according to their receiving of grace, and the believers are at the Bema seat of Christ, and the unbelievers are at the great white throne, what's being judged? Their destination's been determined. The verdict has been handed down. The great judge, God, has already determined their sentence. Their eternal life sentence has been handed down. It has been made clear. So why will there be a judgment if their destination has already been determined? At each of these, at each of these, at each of these judgments, our behaviors will be judged. Here's the point. It matters how you live. Guys, it absolutely matters how you live. It matters how you behave. Your decisions on this earth matter, and they have implications in eternity. It's not just enough to slide into heaven with smoke on your rear. I mean, we make that joke all the time. We missed hell by a matchstick, man. I mean, we, we, got, we smell like smoke. We're so close. Man, that's not going to be good. I mean, you're going to get to heaven, but you're going to miss out on some things. Everyone is not going to receive the same in heaven or hell. Scripture is clear. It's crystal clear. Your beliefs will alter your behavior. Let me talk about the judgment seat of Christ really quickly. I didn't know if I'd get here this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear, he's speaking to believers, Paul's writing to the church at Corinth, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one, each one, each one, each and every, each one may receive the things done in the body while they were living, according to what he has done, whether good or bad, that we may receive from God at the Bema, seat of Christ, the believers, that we may receive in that place what we've done according to when we were in the body, whether good or bad. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. But why do you judge your brother? Why do you believers, he's talking to believers, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of of Christ. In 1 Corinthians, I want you to know something about 1 Corinthians. Paul wrote three letters that we're aware of. He wrote a letter we don't have, and then we have 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians is the second letter. I know. And 2 Corinthians is the third letter. The reason we know this is because in 1 Corinthians, Paul is answering the first letter. He wrote a letter to the Corinthians telling them about Christ. They wrote back and asking some questions. And then in 1 Corinthians, he answers those questions six times in 1 Corinthians. He says, now concerning what we talked about. Now concerning the things that were in my first letter. He doesn't say in my first letter. He says that one time. He says, in my earlier letter, we talked about this. See, people were being saved under the teaching and the preaching of Paul. And then there were some other guys and ladies and Gentiles and Jews and Greeks and everybody else being uh, one to Christ under the preaching and the teaching of this man named Apollos. And Paul is writing back and saying, hey, guys, don't get to fighting about whether you follow Apollos or Paul. You follow Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter who the teacher was who brought you the message. He was just a messenger of the great Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. I don't care which church you go to, which denomination you have, or what your pastor's name is. If your pastor's name is Stuart Douglas Bell, I don't give a flying flip. I represent somebody. I represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. And it is by him we're saved. Woohoo! Anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 through 15. According to the grace, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15, according to the grace of God, which has been given to me, Paul says, <coughs> as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it, Paul and Apollos. But let each one take heed that he, listen, listen, let each one take heed how he builds on the foundation or how you live your life. For no other foundation anyone can lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it. The day, capital D. If you look at 1 Corinthians 3, 
uh, verse 13, it's a capital D. For the day will declare it. The day is judgment day because it will be revealed by fire. God's going to set fire to it. And if it lasts, it lasts. And if it doesn't, it just burns away. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, this is at the judgment seat of Christ, what he did in his life. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward if, conditional clause, if anyone's work which he has built in this life endures, he will receive a reward. Verse 15, if anyone's work is burned, this is at the judgment seat of Christ. These are all believers. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Listen to me. He will suffer loss. You're saying there's going to be believers at the judgment seat of Christ that are going to suffer loss? Yes, because they built a temporary life. They built temporary things. They gave themselves to stuff that didn't matter. Did you know this? Did you understand this? I don't think we understand this. I think more pulpits need to talk about this. I mean, this, we're going to get to heaven and we're going to say, man, had we known there were going to be rewards, uh, we'd have done a little something, 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 something different. Anyway, but he himself will be saved, yet through fire. You can be a believer and build with wood, hay, and straw, or you can be a believer and build with gold, silver, and precious stones. You can be a believer and be rewarded, and you can be a believer at the judgment seat of Christ, at the judgment seat of Christ, and suffer loss. Mm. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Let's hurry up. Take heed that you, do, that you do not, and this is where you can see where you lose stuff. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound the trumpet. Do, 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 before you as hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets that they may receive glory from men. This is building with hay, shovel, and straw. When you get to the judgment seat of Christ, it's going to be burned up and you're going to suffer loss. Assuredly, I say to you that they have their reward. Man, pat them on the back. woo -hoo! But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. God the Father is going to reward you openly one-on-one -on -one at the judgment seat of Christ, he's not going to holler out across the masses. He's going to come and see you, Chip. He's going to come see you, Kelly. He's going to come see you, Brandy. He's going to come see me, Doug. He's going to come see you, Karen. He's going to come see you, uh, uh, Kelly Ash. He's going to come see all of you guys. He's going to come see me, and he's going to personally hand me a reward. I'm going to look nose to nose into the Father of the universe, God Almighty, El Elyon, El Shaddai, El, I mean, just go on with all the names of God. I'm going to look into his face, and he's going to reward me, or he's going to say, listen, you're going to suffer some loss here. First John chapter 2, 28, and now, little children, abide in him. And when he appears, listen to me, abide in him, little children, when he appears, that we may have confidence. When he stands in front of us, that we may have confidence, believers, at the beam of seat of Christ, and not be ashamed while standing before him. At his coming. Listen to me. I want to pray for you. The beam of seat of Christ is going to be a magnificent day for all believers. We will all stand before him. But it says that there's going to be works that last and there's going to be works that do not. That there's going to be those who will be rewarded and those who are going to suffer loss. That there's going to be those who are ashamed and those who have confidence. What you need to understand at the beam of judgment seat of Christ, you're going to be given responsibilities in the new heaven and the new earth. I don't know if you realize this, but we are going to be rulers of cities and nations in the new heaven. Don't miss tomorrow. Let me pray for you. Father, right now in Jesus' name, I pray for every person watching that we would get a grasp of how glorious the judgment seat of Christ can be and how great and dreadful the great white throne judgment can be. And Father, that we can do things starting today to lay up in heaven treasures that moth can't destroy, rust can't destroy, and no thief can steal. We should be more concerned about laying up treasure in heaven than we are about laying treasure of hay, rubble, and straw here on earth. God, give us that concept. Give us that mentality in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Don't you dare miss tomorrow. Woo! We're going to talk about the great white throne judgment. You need to think about what we talked about today. You need to watch this about 10 times, what you just listened to. Go back over all these verses. I'm going to type them into the comments in a few minutes when I go back through this. This is massive. What you do in this life matters. 
You will either have confidence or be ashamed, be rewarded or suffer loss. You will stand before God, believers, and be judged. Not according to your salvation, but according to your works. Share this out. Hit some likes. Hit some hearts. Hit some mad faces. Just hit some anything and let me know you're there. Say hi. Say bye. I'm gone. Woo! Amen. Woo! Bye, guys.